cycle after cycle, for millions of cycles, that you're getting the same size component. What actually is a critical medical part? Well, the parts that these molds that we're building for, parts that will be out in the industry, both medical and pharmaceutical. So they're life-saving devices that we're producing the molds for. And we're talking like inhalers or EpiPens, stuff like this? One is the EpiPen would be a major side of the business and the other would be cardiovascular operations. So procedures where our devices will be in the theatre on heart surgery. So needless to say, zero failure is not acceptable. Wow, and I guess in surgery there's cross-contamination, there's, there's, there's stuff happening, there's, there's, there's dangers everywhere for the yeah. people who are on the table. So yeah, this person might be lying on the table getting a stent put into their system. Our device cannot fail. So the most that we produce here, producing that device, it cannot fail. And then on the other hand, somebody could go into epileptic shock. If that pin injector, that has to function, that has to operate. So that's when we say life-saving devices. Oh my that's God. what we're talking about. It must be quite scary actually making these, trying it, to get. It is scary. And look, we know, and that's the standards that we have to supply to our customers. So. Absolutely. And so talking about this zero failure rate, what is a zero failure rate? And, and, and why do you need a zero failure rate? Well, first of all, the mold, we look at the mold that we're producing. That will probably have to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All these molds have a lot of moving parts. They run in environments where the mold itself might be running at 90 degrees. The plastic is injected in at 20, 220 to 300 degrees. And it's running around the clock seven days a week. So with all these sliding parts running in this environment and pressures where injection pressure is 700 bar up, and in a 150 ton to 300 ton machine. So the mold has to withstand a fairly tough conditions. And given these harsh environments, um, I guess the mold needs to have a good longevity, but there's also another thing coming out is the plastic part. And how, do the, how does the manufacture of the mold affect the plastic part that comes out? Well, there's two, two main things you're looking for on your plastic part, is the measurement and the tolerances that you're achieving. So these have to be repeatable, cycle after cycle, for millions of cycles that you're getting the same size component. And other critical things you're looking like is flash, mismatch. So to get them tolerances in the mold, that allows you to get that quality part. And that's what we're doing here in this company at the moment. Wow, I love it. So we've got an example part you're holding here uh, today, David. This is an example of the complexities of, of one of the cores that will go inside of your, one of your molds. Can you just talk us around how you make it, please? Well, we make it here in this section here. Most is a finished machine and it's done. So all of this here is done on our five axis rotor, which we've invested here in the background. And it's all done in one setup to tolerances of three to five microns. That's the sort of tolerance we have to achieve. So as we say, for zero failure rate once it goes out in the market for the product and the mold. Oh my God, have you ever made anything to three to five microns, especially as complex as this? Now looking at the part um, with all the different features, it looked like it might maybe traditionally would have been made with an EDM kind of process. It would have. A uh, lot would still try and make this in maybe three or four setups from milling, high speed machining to EDM and then polishing afterwards. We're doing it here all in one setup and most of these will be finished lights out when the operators are gone at night. So what we've done is in one setup with a combination of the equipment, the staff that we have here, we have experienced staff in this controlled environment, we can run it machining down to point, using cutters of 0.1 in diameter. And to put that in perspective, that's the same as the hair in your head, the diameter of the hair in your head.